This video discusses the anatomy of the hip joint. Hip joint connects the lower limb to the pelvic girdle and it is the largest joint of the body. The joint occurs between the femoral head and the acetabulum of the pelvis. Head of femur articulates with the acetabulum and it's a synovial joint which consists of synovial membrane and fluid filled cavity. And it's multi-axial joint, it means it has a full range of movement in all four directions. And it's also a ball and socket variety. So the femoral head acts as the ball and the socket is the acetabulum. We'll discuss about the articular surfaces of this each component. We'll start from the acetabulum. So acetabulum, you can see it's cup shaped and it's formed by the fusion of ileum, ischium and the pubis. This articular surface is covered by C-shaped hyaline cartilage and but central part is not covered by the cartilage. Instead, it's covered by a fat pad, which is Havasian pad. And then acetabular labrum attached peripherally, which is fibrocartilage, and deepen the acetabular. And also the labrum increase the stability of the hip joint. When inferiorly, acetabular labrum continue as the transverse ligament or transverse acetabular ligament and bridge the acetabular notch. Femoral articular surface uh, is the head of the femur. So it is covered by the hyaline cartilage. And in femoral head also, in the central part, which is fovea, is non-articular. And the ligament of head of the femur attached to the central fovea. And this ligament of head of femur, again attached to the transverse ligament of the acetabulum and to the margins of the acetabular notch. Then we'll discuss what is the fibrous capsule and its attachment of the hip joint. So the, its attachment anteriorly and posteriorly is different. The capsule is attached to the acetabular labrum and the transverse ligament. Anteriorly, the joint capsule is attached to the intertrochanteric line and posteriorly, it attached to the halfway along the femoral head, usually about 1.5 cm medial to the intertrochanteric crest. So from the capsular attachment, fibers reflect along the femoral neck as retinacular fibers. This retinacular fibers extends up to the articular margin of the femoral head. So what is the importance of these retinacular fibers? Small arteries and veins pass along the retinacular fibers to supply the head and neck region and these retinacular fibers do binding down these arteries and facilitate this arterial passage. So when the intracapsular fracture happens in the femoral neck, which is inside the capsule, these retinacular fibers can damage or rupture. Then the uh, accompanying vessels also can damage and it can compromise the vascular or arterial supply to the head and neck region. So then ultimately, avascular necrosis of the femoral head can happen. So what is sonar orbicularis? In the capsule, we can identify a circular area which is very clearly seen posteriorly. This is the uh, zona orbicularis. The capsular fibers run down in two directions. One is obliquely downward and laterally. And the other one is uh, function as a bundle which encircles the capsule uh, parallel to the acetabular uh, margin. So this is the sonar orbicularis. So we'll talk about the stability of the hip joint. What are the factors affect to stabilize the hip joint? Uh, the femoral head is not fully occupied by the acetabulum, only a portion, usually 40% to 70% from the femoral head surface. So uh, there are several factors contribute to increase the stability. One is acetabular labrum, which increase the stability by deepening the acetabulum. And then other one is extremely strong joint capsule. Next one is muscle stabilizers. Uh, there are several short muscles arranged around the hip joint, mainly in the gluteal region. There are three specific ligaments arranged around the hip joint, which contribute to the stability. So this each ligament uh, arises from one from ileum, pubis, and then ischium. The ligament origin from the ileum is iliofemoral ligament. Ligament origin from the pubis is pubofemoral and then ischium. From ischial bone, it is the ischiofemoral ligament. So these are the three ligaments contribute to the hip joint stability. So we'll discuss one by one. Ileofemoral ligament 
here in this one. It is the strongest ligament out of uh, three ligaments and it resists the hyperextension of hip joint. This arises from the lower half of the anterior inferior iliac spine. It's roughly triangular shape. So a pix is attached to the uh, iliac spine and then it comes downward and attached to the intertrochanteric line. This is the ilofemoral ligament. And then pubofemoral ligament arises from the superior ramus and the obturator crest of pubic bone and it passes deep to the ilofemoral ligament and blend with the uh, hip joint capsule. Next one is ischiofemoral ligament. We can see clearly in the posterior aspect. It arises from the uh, posterior inferior margin of the acetabulum and blend with zona orbicularis of the capsule and inserted into the base of the greater trochanter. Synovial membrane line the capsule and attach to the labrum and the transverse ligament inferiorly and it reflect back along the neck of the femur and it invests the retinacular fibers up to the articular margin of the head and it also line the non-articular surface which is the haversian pad and the ligament of the head of the femur as well. So there are several relations to the knee joint. We, we can discuss it in four directions. Anteriorly, we can identify psoas major tendon, pectineus muscle, and ilosoas bursa. Now, the external iliac and femoral artery lie on the tendon of psoas major. So, the psoas major tendon separate the joint capsule from the femoral artery. Then, medially, the pectineus muscle intervene between the joint capsule and femoral vein. Ilosoas bursa separate the ilosoas muscular tendinous part from the joint capsule. Then superiorly, now you know the rectus femoris has two heads, one is reflected head, other one is straight head. This reflected head of the rectus femoris and the gluteus minimus muscle is uh, in superior relation with the capsule. Inferiorly, obturator externus muscle spirals and pass below the capsule towards the neck of the femur. Posteriorly, we have small gluteal muscles which is piriformis obturator internus, superior and inferior gemelli and these muscles separate the sciatic nerve from the joint capsule. Then laterally in this region iliotibial tract presents and it blends with the joint capsule. Medially we have obturator vessels, artery, vein and nerve in relation with the hip joint. Hip joint is a very mobile joint and the movement is possible in all directions. It has flexion, extension, abduction, adduction and circumduction which is the combination of all four. Now in flexion the femur rotates about a transverse axis that passes through both acetabula. Flexion and extension both happens around this direction. So muscles responsible for flexions are uh, ilosoas uh, that is psoas major and iliacus then the rectus femoris, pectineus and the sartorius. Extension again it is the reverse of the flexion around the same axis as the flexion and the responsible muscles are gluteus maximus and hamstrings muscles except the short head of biceps femoris. Adduction and abduction happens due to femoral head rotates in the acetabulum about an anteroposterior axis. To adduction, muscles involved are pectineus, adductors of the thigh which are adductor magnus, adductor brevis and adductor longus and also the gracilis. For the abduction, we can discuss in uh, two ways. One is abduction in standing position. So the muscles involved are gluteus medius and minimus assisted by tensor fasciae and sartorius. Now the abduction in uh, standing position is limited by the tension of adductors and the pubofemoral ligament. Abduction in sitting position when the thigh is flexed such as uh, you sit on a car seat. Uh, which is like helping to move the leading leg when you're getting out of a car. Um, so for this movement, the abductors in action are piriformis, superior inferior gemellus, obturator internus and externus. Rotation is uh, happens around a vertical axis passed through the center of the femoral head. So this is the axis. Femoral head rotates in the acetabulum mean rotation. Uh, we can... Um, Explain it as medial rotation and the lateral rotation. So medial rotation uh, where the anterior fibers of gluteus, medius and minimus helps 
and assisted by the tensor fascia lati. And for lateral rotation, again the uh, small muscles of the gluteal region helps, which is piriformis, obturator internus, gemellus, obturate externus, and quadratus femoris. And this assisted by the gluteus maximus and sartorius. We'll talk about a bit of clinical aspect of the hip joint. First one is neck of femur fracture. In neck of femur fracture, the leg is acquire a unique position. So it is a shortened and externally rotated limb. So how this uh, shortening and external rotation happens? Now in a femoral neck fracture, the shaft is free to move, free to rotate in its own axis. So shortening happens due to the external rotators, short external rotators like uh, short muscles in the gluteal region, obturator externus uh, and internus, superior and inferior gemelli, uh, and also the quadratus femoris. And the uh, shortening happens due to iliopsoas uh, muscle pull the uh, limb up, then it acquires the shortened uh, position. So in neck of femur fracture, limb acquired the shortened externally rotated appearance. Hip dislocation is also an important uh, clinical uh, scenario. Usually the dislocation occur backwards by a force applied along the femoral shaft when the hip is flexed, like, like in this uh, position. In hip dislocation, it can accompany the acetabular fracture or it can happen without the acetabular fracture. So when the hip in adapted position, like in this position, there is no acetabulum intervene posteriorly. So hip dislocation occur without acetabular fracture. But when the hip is abducted, now we can see clearly the acetabulum is going to obstruct the uh, dislocation direction. So dislocation usually accompany the fracture of the posterior acetabular limb. Now in these hip dislocations, posteriorly the sciatic nerve is uh, descending. So sciatic nerve is in greater danger to be injured in hip dislocation. Hip joint is supplied mainly by the trochanteric anastomosis and also assisted by the cruciate anastomosis. I'll discuss these two anastomoses in separate video. So head and intracapsular part of the neck mainly supplied by the trochanteric anastomosis. In the trochanteric anastomosis, the most important main uh, contributor is the medial circumflex femoral artery. And also the cruciate anastomosis contribute to the blood supply through the trochanteric anastomosis. Now there's an artery in the ligament of head of the femur, which is not very important in adults, but it is an important source in children. When children grow up and become adults, this artery obliterated and not a significant contributor to the blood supply of the femoral head. Hip joint is supplied by the femoral nerve, obturator nerve and the sciatic nerve and also the nerve to quadratus femoris. And these three nerves also supply the knee joint. Keep in mind when there's a hip joint pain, it can be referred to the knee joint as well. Thank you. Stay connected with Anatomy Everywhere YouTube channel.